Hello yogis, namaste. Welcome back to another video. Thank you for joining me for today's Garage Corner Yoga, where I teach you yoga <laughs> in the corner of my garage. Okay, this is a one woman show. When we start to get not just garage corners, like maybe the whole garage or like garage door yoga, that's when you know I will have made it. But anyway, um, welcome to today's class. We're gonna do a vinyasa flow that's active and has a lot of stretching for all body parts. So get on your mat, get ready to have fun and do some yoga. So we will begin in child's pose. You can either keep your knees wide or close together. What we wanna focus on is elongating yourself forward. So maybe you walk your fingers forward as much as they can go before your uh, hips start to lift off of your feet or your heels. And now you're going to take this time to lay your forehead down, start to tune into your breath and relax. Start to feel the muscles in the face relax the muscles that hold your rib cage the muscles around your ears the muscles of your neck your shoulders fingers let them all just relax into this child's pose take note of your breath not changing anything but just watching How the air moves in and out, how the ribcage moves, expands and relaxes without you even telling it to. How the wind in your body follows the path up your windpipe and outside your nose. Notice how the air moves past each nose hair. you started to let your mind wander a little bit, gently nudge it back. There's a lot of stuff we have to do today or that we've done today. And it's all going to happen outside of this time that we have together. It's gonna, you know, end up happening the way you plan it, the way you wanted it. But just let this time be a time that you silence those alarms and <laughs> if there was beeping in the background, it's finally shut off. I don't know what it was. I don't live alone, okay? <laughs> You're going to take an inhale and slowly rise now, very, very slowly. Maybe you keep that arch in your back and the bend in the elbows as you come into tabletop position where we will begin. Now get into your tabletop. Shoulders are going to be right above your elbows and your wrists. Make sure that your hips are right under or right above your knees, knees, hips distance apart. You're going to move from side to side. Now start to feel your weight shift over the wrist. Try to move some of that weight into the balls of your palms, of your hands, balls of your hands. Maybe you sway forward and back. Side to side again. Once you've found that center in neutral, take another deep breath. And exhale. 
Inhale, tilt the tailbone up, pull the shoulders down, come into a cow. And exhale like you're blowing toward the floor, like there's fire underneath the belly button. Pull the spine upward, feeling the stretch in the upper back. Inhale, still with the belly button pulled in. Slowly feel each vertebrae come into cow. Exhale, let the spine naturally curve into a cat. We'll take a couple more here. Inhale. And exhale. If you want to explore the spine and move in a circular motion to the right, do so. Maybe go to the left if you've gone to the right. Come back into neutral spine now. Tuck the toes. Come up onto the balls of your feet, but don't raise all the way up into a downward dog. You wanna stay with your knees lifted about one or two inches. And here, start to feel the activation in your shoulders happening much more. Begin to push away from the floor, lifting your chest and upper back forward, not forward, upward. And feel your quadriceps holding you. It would be really useful to pull the belly in and activate the core to hold everything steady. Exhale, come back into tabletop, lower the knees. Untuck the toes as you move back a little bit more. Now we're going to flip the hands over for some wrist stretching. Inhale, gently pull the wrists back and exhale, rock forward to your comfortable spot. Inhale, pull the wrists back and exhale forward. While we are in tabletop and moving with breath, you want to make sure your belly is still pulled in. That core is where all of your energy stems from. And if you have a solid core foundation, then moving in the more active poses will feel more controlled day by day. Come back on your feet just for a little bit to switch the palms. Now you're going to tuck the toes again and lift the knees. Push away from the floor. Make sure the tailbone is moving toward the ground here. So you don't want to be in an arched back position, but you want to keep the upper back neutral and pull that tailbone down. You'll feel a lot more engagement in your core this way. Take one more inhale. And exhale, straighten the legs, come into down dog. In down dog, I always use this time to kind of like feel out my, bo my body. I'm not sure if you just saw me fidget around a little bit, but I like to lift my heels to add a little bit more stretch in the hips so as I tilt my hips back and forth. Um, I like to come onto the toe and bend the knee, opening up my hamstrings. So just take this downward dog to really explore how you feel today. Take inventory of like your spine as you move it around in circles, keeping those armpit muscles engaged still because you don't want to lean your weight into your shoulders. Feel your weight as it extends from the heel of your wrist, well, I guess your wrist to the balls of your fingers, the balls of your hands and your fingers. I cannot speak right now. But you know, just feel the down dog. That first down dog is always so good for waking up the muscles that are going to be working the most in yoga, at least for the upper body. Now, a big tip about down dog is you don't want to 
let your rib cage fall forward. Instead, you want to pull your lower rib, rib cage together. Make as po like straight a possible a line in your spine. I rhymed. You're gonna come onto your tippy toes now and curve your spine forward like a wave until your shoulders go a little bit in front of your elbow or your wrist. You're gonna start walking your feet back until your wrists are right underneath your shoulders. Now we're here in plank. You're going to lower the knees and raise them up. Lower the knees and raise them up. Lower the knees and raise them up. In plank, continue. Lower the knees and raise. Make sure that you're pushing away from the floor. Keeping that upper body and that core still active. Keep the core tight. Lower the knees now. And push back into child's pose again. Is this thing still on? <laughs> Inhale, rise all the way up, slowly feeling each vertebrae stack on each other. Take that right arm and walk your left, or take your right arm up and walk your left fingertips over to the left. Make sure your right hip is still putting on even weight onto your right heel. Lower those shoulders down, make space for the ears. Look up at the right hand. And as you exhale, switch the hands. Left arm comes up, right hand starts to walk its way. So as you walk over to the right side, you also want to push to the left in your hips. That will allow for more stability and stretching of the side. Pull the belly in, open that left shoulder a little bit more. And come back up. Take the right arm up again. Walk the hands over or left hand over slightly as you're leaning over to the left. Now you're gonna circle the arm back. I'll face you, but stay where you are. You're gonna circle the right arm back, up, back, and down. Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale up, and exhale down. Inhale up and exhale down again. Now going back up and exhale forward. Inhale up and exhale down. Inhale up and exhale down. Inhale up and exhale down. Last one. And exhale. Inhale, the left arm comes up, right fingers start to Crawl to the right, so you're leaning over. You're going to inhale back, well, exhale back, sorry. Inhale up and exhale back, still keeping that belly pulled in. Inhale and exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. Now we're gonna go inhale back up Exhale down, coordinate the movement with the breath. That's what vinyasa means. On your last one, come back up into hero's pose. Hold here, steady the breath again. Feel the difference in between your arms opening the shoulders just a little bit it has brought a little bit more energy i'm going to walk the hands forward till you come into tabletop position with your shoulders right above your wrists and hips above the knees tuck the tailbone or tuck the toes down and now lift up into downward facing dog again take a deep inhale and exhale, make sure those uh, armpits are spinning towards the ears, ribcage pulled in. Look in front of you, 
inhale, tippy toes, exhale, bend the knees. Inhale, jump forward or step forward. Look ahead of you, elongate the spine, pull the belly in and exhale, fold. Inhale, rise all the way up. Hands meet at the top, and now you're going to exhale, bend the arms, cactus, opening up the heart. So in this motion, you're not really pulling your chest forward, but more so like opening, pulling the heart up as if a string were holding your heart. Exhale, hands back up, and exhale again, hands all the way down. Inhale, the hands come up, and exhale, draw the hands through, stopping at the heart, and fold all the way forward, forward fold. Inhale, lift yourself up halfway, pull the belly in, and exhale, fold again. Now in these forward folds, if you need to bend your knees, please do so. The priority is not to touch your toes because if you touch your toes and you're not flexible enough or you don't have enough strength, then it'll end up looking like this and that doesn't really bring much strength to the muscles and the joints. So what you want to do is make sure that this lower back is straight, as I mentioned in last week's class. And if you need to, please bend your knees. You know, it's okay if it's like this because you'll still feel a stretch. Eventually, you'll notice that you need to bend your knees less and less and less. And you're like, oh, snap. My legs are straight. My back is straight. That's crazy. <laughs> that, my friends, is flexibility. Inhale. Look ahead of you one more time. And exhale. Plant the hands. Jump or step into Chaturanga. Exhale. Did I say chaturanga? I'm sorry. I meant plank. Exhale now into chaturanga. Inhale, push up into upward dog or cobra with the knees down. And exhale, downward dog. Hmm. Some of you who watch the video while you're doing the yoga probably caught on that I meant to say plank instead of chaturanga. Inhale, come onto your tippy toes. Exhale, bend the knees. Inhale, jump or step to the top of the mat. Lift halfway. And exhale, fold. On an inhale, rise all the way up. Hands meet at the top. And exhale. Hands by the side. One more time, Surya Namaskar A, inhale. Exhale. Inhale, look ahead of you. And exhale, plant the hands, jump or step back. Plank. And go back down into Chaturanga. Hold the Chaturanga for a second, Chaturanga check. Make sure that you're not going all the way down. We wanna preserve this right angle in the elbows. And if your shoulders are creeping towards your ears, try to push them down the back as much as possible while keeping the hips. I know, I'm getting tired too. But we can do it while keeping the hips in line. Make sure the butt is tucked. Exhale, release all the way down. Untuck the toes. Inhale, raise yourself up into a cobra. Now in cobra, here you want to make sure that your tailbone, and this is true for all uh, back bends, make sure your tailbone is tucked under. You can't really see anything happening, but you'll feel a difference in the compression in your lower back if you pull your tailbone down. Gotta tilt the pelvis. That's a trick that I learned. I'm like, oh, now my lower back doesn't hurt as much. So for a lot of back bends, Make sure you're tucking your pelvis. Tailbone, tilting your pelvis. Exhale, push back into 
child's pose to counter the back bends. Come back to the breath just for a moment. Inhale, rise up back into tabletop. Tuck the toes, come into down dog. Inhale, lift the heels. Exhale, bend the knees, look ahead of you. Pull the shoulders back, bring some space into your ears or ear area. Now you're going to inhale and jump or step to the top of the mat, look ahead of you. And exhale, fold deeply again. Inhale, bring a little bend to your knees here as you rise up. The little bend allows for more activation in the hamstrings and the glutes. And you can feel it actually work. It's a little cute butt secret. Step to the top of the mat. Just feel the gravity pull you down. Sway from side to side. Maybe you curl your toes against the mat just to activate those muscles, those joints. Inhale, hands come all the way up. And exhale, fold again. Inhale, look ahead of you, lift the heart and plant the hands. Exhale, jump or step back, chaturanga. Inhale, come to upward facing dog and exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, the right leg rises and exhale, right leg steps through. Now before you inhale and come up onto a high lunge, make sure that the um, hips are even. So your left one wants to come up. Make sure you lower it down a little bit. That right knee is moving towards the pinky toe. Tuck the belly in. Inhale with the leg still the same. Come up. You'll feel the activation in your right leg. Exhale. Bend the arms, cactus the uh, arms, and open the heart. Inhale, arms come up, and exhale, open up the arms into warrior two. So this warrior two, usually people kind of open up to the front, but you want to face the side first completely with your body, palms face down, and then all you're going to do is look over your right hand. So pull the belly in, tailbone is heavy, then the right, or flip the right hand, so palms, palms face up, and open up into reverse warrior, straightening or lengthening the right side. Make sure that uh, right shoulder is opening for your heart. I'm going to exhale now and lower either your elbow on the knee, or maybe you come into a full side angle. If you're coming into side angle, make sure there's a straight line coming from your foot all the way up to your fingertips. No angle here, just a straight line. Look up at the fingers. And you're going to inhale again, straighten that right leg. And you're going to come into reverse triangle where that right hip is pulling down. You're still keeping this plane, this straight plane on your mat, just going side and side, side to side. You're going to exhale now, bring the hands to frame the right foot. Inhale, step that right foot back plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, sweep that left leg up. Feel a stretch in the right hamstring before you exhale. Step the right foot through. Make sure you pull the shoulders back, 
That right heel is pushing forward, so it's right above the toes. Even out the hips. Lift up onto the fingertips first. And then inhale, using the power of the legs, come up, crescent. Exhale, open the heart, cactus. Inhale, oh, hands come up. And exhale, we're coming into warrior two. Remember, one straight line opening up completely to the right side. Lower the shoulders and then look over the left fingertips. Breathe here. Make sure that left knee is moving towards your pinky toe and not caving in. Push that right shoulder back if it's crept up again. Inhale, flip the palm and reverse the warrior, keeping the belly pulled in. Relax that left shoulder. And exhale, either left elbow on left thigh, or you bring that left hand all the way down, right arm stretches up and over the right ear, open the heart on the right. I mean, I know your heart's on the left, but open your right shoulder. <laughs> Inhale now, using the power in the left leg, you're going to straighten it, coming into a reverse triangle with that left hip Gently sliding down. Feel that elongation all the way up from the hip to the armpit. Bend the knee, left knee on an exhale. Hands come down. Inhale, step that left foot back. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Take a breath, get ready to flow. Activate the core, pull the belly in, wrap the rib cage around the belly. Inhale, right leg comes up. Exhale, step it through. Level out the hips, inhale, arms come up. Exhale, cactus the arms. Inhale, come up. And exhale, open up, warrior two. Inhale, reverse the warrior. Exhale, side angle. Inhale, straighten the right leg. And exhale, hands come to frame the foot. Inhale, step that right foot back, plank. And exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, keeping the belly in, downward facing dog. Left side, inhale. And exhale, step the foot through. Inhale, crescent lunge. Exhale, cactus the arms. Inhale, hands come up again. Make sure you're tucking that pelvis forward in this lunge. And exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reverse the warrior. Exhale, lower that left elbow or left hand. Inhale, straighten the left leg. Left arm comes up, and exhale, windmill the arms down. Inhale, plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog, and exhale, down dog. Last one on your own, coordinating breath with movement. If you're lost, just take a look at the screen real quick to catch up.
And when you're finished, lower the knees and come into a child's pose. Start to relax the breath. While you're breathing here, you can probably feel your heart rate, your heartbeat. What's interesting about controlling the breath is you start to notice that conscious breath and the heartbeat are quite independent. The heart will beat how it has to but we can actually slow down our breath. And as you slow down the breath, the heart starts to slow down too. And it actually helps relax your whole body. So feel the slowing down. going to inhale, come forward into a cobra. Make sure again that your tailbone is tucked underneath. Bend the elbows now and slowly lower down with the belly still active. Lower the chin onto the floor. You're going to lift the feet up still with pointed toes. Keeping the chin down, just feel the glutes working and lower the feet. Inhale, you're going to rise just slightly in the upper back. So you're not using your arms at all. They're really just to keep your heart open, but you're just going to be using the muscles in your upper back. That's what's working. The hands are just like accessories. Lower the back down or lower the chest down. Squeeze the butt muscles, pull the butt tailbone under, point the toes, and lift the legs. You'll feel all of that working right there. Lower the toes, inhale, lift the heart. Baby cobra. You'll notice that your butt is still kind of, kind of working here, lifting your heart up. Lower the heart. Inhale, feet come up. Exhale, lower. Inhale, heart comes up. Exhale, lower. Inhale, feet. Exhale, lower. Inhale, heart. Exhale, lower. You'll notice that the same muscles, inhale the feet, are working no matter if it's the feet or the heart coming up. That's because all the muscles are connected and keeping your back body strong. And exhale, relax everything to the floor. You're going to inhale, slowly rise up into a cobra and push back onto your knees into a wide-legged child's pose for just a second. Inhale, wave the spine forward, tuck the toes under, come into downward dog. Now here, you're going to take your right arm and pass it through, try to get your left heel. Now you're gonna try to keep your hips uh, even your right hip wants to come up but try to keep that right hip down if you need to readjust your hands my hands are quite slippery so or sweaty so they move um, but if you need to bring your left hand closer to the or closer to the middle to help you with keeping your hips even please do so that is an option make sure that your left elbow is not uh, locked, but instead micro bent. So you're activating more of the muscles around it and strengthening those joints. They'll help you avoid a uh, hyperextension. Inhale, switch the hands, and you're going to do another twist. 
over to the left, so your or right, so your left hand is now reaching for the right ankle. Pull the belly in. We're still in the same kind of alignment as down dog. My voice is so weird when I'm upside down. <laughs> Look over that right shoulder, or under it, rather. And bring the hands back forward. You're going to inhale, right leg comes up. And exhale, make your way into pigeon, or preparing for pigeon. Now here in pigeon, you may do a couple things. So if your hip isn't that open yet, um, and you want to keep your hips even and you don't have any other props, you can just bring your heel a little bit closer to the left hip. Um, if you want to practice opening that hip with that right leg parallel or the right shin parallel to the front of the mat and you have a block or a pillow or something, you can bring it underneath your right hip to hold you up. Uh, usually I don't have a block with me, so I just practice it here. Ultimately, you would want your hips to be square and evenly pressing into the floor. Pull the belly in here. Maybe you push that left knee down and that right hip forward with your left hand. Open up the heart. Maybe you walk your hands back a little bit before you exhale and all fold forward. You can start it slowly by resting on your elbows for a couple breaths. We're gonna be here for a while, so get comfortable. Maybe you come onto your forehead now, making a pillow with your hands. Couple more breaths. If this is good for you, please stay here. If you want a little bit more and your body is ready for it, then come up onto your right hand. You're going to take your left arm and thread it underneath. So you're on your uh, left shoulder. Be aware of the hip opening. If you feel like the stretch is getting very intense, you wanna be surfing your edge where it's um, bearably discomfortable, uncomfortable, but you don't want it to be unbearingly painful. So if you feel like it's hurting in a bad way and it's not something you can breathe through, feel free to come back up, lighten the load, Modify it the way your body asks you to. If you're in the extra twisted pigeon, some people like to take their right hand and bring it down to reach their foot. Um, right hand back to reach the right foot. Mm. These deep long stretches are very good for opening up those tighter tendons and ligaments, especially my squatters and weight or deadlifters out there. You got really tight ligaments because you have to keep those joints safe. But sometimes when we add on a lot of stress, tight hips can hold a lot of those emotions. So it's important to lighten up, ease up every once in a while. Let all the tension go. If you found that any tension has come into the face, the eyebrows, the cheeks, send it off with love. Notice your breath. Start to make your way out of your pigeon. 
and come up into a downward facing dog, three-legged dog. Bent knee here, slowly start to circle that right hip around. Make sure you're pulling that rib cage together. Elbow, armpits spiraling towards the ears. Lower that right leg now. Inhale, left leg comes up. And exhale, make your way for pigeon. So that left, hand, uh, left foot is going to hook behind that right hand. And start to scoot that right leg back a little bit more. Again, if you need to use a block for the left side, please do so. Modify this practice to make it enjoyable and comfortable for you. Being flexible is not a prerequisite for doing yoga. Just a reminder. Inhale, open the heart. Maybe you walk the hands back. And exhale, walk the fingers forward. Maybe you stop at your elbows. Take inventory of how the weight has shifted onto the left leg and off the right thigh. Try to even that out. Exhale, breathe, continue. Maybe you come down into the pigeon. Just get comfortable. The right side of your head should be resting on your hands. So you're looking over your left shoulder. Just relax into it again. If you need a little bit more, come onto your left hand and thread that left right arm through. Maybe you come onto your right shoulder. Notice how the weight starts to lift a little bit from your hips. Still feeling that stretch. Maybe you lift that left arm and Cross it over the back and reach for your left foot if that calls for you. If your hip is open today, just relax, sink into it. Start to notice how your hip is slowly opening up a little bit more. Like I said earlier, we hold a lot of fear and pain and inadequacy, rage in our hips. These long holds, these hip openers are very good for releasing that energy. And if you're not an energy type of person, having open hips is really important. Regardless. Helps in running, squatting, lifting, swimming, biking especially. Especially because those are such hip intensive movements that tighten those ligaments. Again, if it's becoming too much, please ease your way out. You wanna surf the edge. And if on your little surfing voyage you found a little Crease in between the eyebrows or clenching the jaw. Take this time to send it off with love. 
Recognize it's there. Just relax those muscles. I'm going to inhale. Make your way up slowly. And come into downward dog. Three-legged dog, opening up that right hip. Feel the difference now when you lower that left leg. Did I say right hip? I meant left leg. Ooh, my hips feel good. Inhale, look out of you, bend the knees, and make your way to a seated position. Legs straight out in front of you. Take note here of your posture. Pull the belly in. Make sure that spine is long, shoulders down. Relax the muscles in between your ears and your shoulders. Make sure the feet are active. Again, belly pulled in. You're going to exhale, reach for the toes with your peace fingers. Inhale, lift the heart. Lengthen the spine, pull the tailbone down as you pull the crown upward. And exhale, fold forward. So see how I'm starting from my belly button? You're going to start from here and fold as much as you can, making as much contact with the legs as possible. Go as far as you can before you relax into it. For some of you, you will stop here and just Relax, and that's where you'll stop. But you want to keep this line in between your tailbone and mid-back as long as possible. Pull the core in, lead with the belly, chest, then forehead. It's my little mantra. Relax here. Again, if you feel tension making its way up to your cheeks or your... Nostrils, I don't know who will hold tension in their nostrils, but relax them. Now you're going to slowly come up, keeping that spine bent, stacking each vertebrae on top of each other. Bring the hands forward in front of you, pull the shoulders back. Pull the belly in, and now you're going to tuck the tailbone under like you're scooping up, and slowly, slowly make your way onto your back. As controlled as you can, the slower, the better. Use the core, and lower down. Inhale, bring the knees up to your fingertips. Oops, I meant your heels. Sorry, that didn't make sense. If you're watching me, you know what I meant. <laughs> so you're going to bend your knees, bring your heels just to where your fingertips can graze them. We're going to prepare for our couple bridges here. You're going to inhale, tuck that tailbone under, and pull the hips up first and then the spine. And when you're here, make sure your chin reaches toward the ceiling. Lower the shoulders down. Kind of like you're trying to push your chest upward. Make room for the heart. And you want your knees not to go completely in like they're touching, but make sure that they're not splaying out. Kind of like you're holding a balloon in between your knees. Still tucking that tailbone under, engaging those glute muscles. And lower down. Directly opposite as what, when you first came up, you want to wave the hips down and then the tailbone comes down last. Inhale, tuck the tailbone under, rise up. And exhale, lower. Inhale, tuck the tailbone under, up, rise up. And maybe you clasp the hands underneath, walk the shoulders under. For a little bit more opening in the chest, remember to Raise the chin upward. And 
and exhale, release here. All the way down, relax the back. Bring the knees together at first to relax any compression or tightness in the lower back. Windmill the legs from, or not windmill, windshield wiper the legs from side to side. You're gonna lower the legs. Bend the right knee. Bring it closer to your chest. You're gonna lift your upper back, keeping the neck long. Try to kiss your knee if you can reach. Reach toward that direction. And lower down. Left hand goes on the outside of the right leg and you're going to twist over. Try to keep the shoulders on the floor so the right shoulder should still be on the floor even if your knee comes this far up. Find the twist, but keep the spine long and safe. Relax here. Inhale and bring that right knee back up. Switch the legs, left leg comes up, left knee comes up. Inhale, lift the chest, try to kiss the knee and lower down right leg right hand on the outside of the left thigh or knee and you're going to twist over keeping that left arm uh, left shoulder on the floor look over your left shoulder feel the elongation of the stretch maybe you push that left hip down there's a different sensation in there Relax the face, the shoulders. Inhale, bring that left knee back up and lower down. Making your way, preparing for the rest, the Shavasana. Hands, palms facing up. Um, arms spread out a little wide, maybe like 45 degrees from your armpit. And take this time to relax now again the muscles of the face. Anything in your shoulders that's holding on, begin to release it now in the hips and the glutes. Take inventory of the muscles and knees and calves and toes even. Stay here for a couple more minutes. Really feeling the sensations in your body now that you've activated all those muscles. Enjoying the breath as it now enters and exits a cleansed, I don't want to say cleansed of energy, <laughs> body. So again, please stay here in Shavasana for another two to three minutes. Five minutes if you can afford those extra couple. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this yoga flow. Make sure you like this video and subscribe if you do like it, enjoy it. And um, most importantly, please share this video with friends, anybody who wants to start a yoga practice or that you think could benefit from yoga. I make yoga videos regularly, so thank you. Namaste.